Hi there, my name is Brian Arnold. I'm a sound designer, I'm a technical sound designer, and I am an audio composer. And what you've just seen is a prototype that I put together that explored how I could make a generative, adaptive music system. And the goal of this system was to create a system that would be modular, that would be scalable, but would also be able to maintain a fairly high level of customization. The goal was also to try and design the system in a way that new songs could be created entirely inside of the Unity editor rather than having to rely on hard coding it every single time. So that said, let's actually take a quick look at what's happening under the hood here. The song arrangement prefab is the main game object that holds both the list of chords that can be played as well as the droning synth pad that plays according to what chord is currently active. Now, in order for the system to be modular and to be fairly designer friendly, I made pretty copious use of scriptable objects. And so what we can do is we can start by taking a look at the drone scriptable object. So it's a very, very simple scriptable object that holds the string value of a wise event. And this controls the playback of the drone synth itself. You can see here that the string name is Play Cloud Shimmer Drone. If I navigate over to the wise project, we can see that there is an event called Play Cloud Shimmer Drone. And this event is responsible for playing the Cloud Shimmer Drone switch container, specifically the music switch container. But for now, let's go back to Unity and go back to the song arrangement. And we're going to take a look at the chord list here. So each of the chords in the list is a scriptable object, and they are all derived from the same class, which is the chord base class. If I open up one of these scriptable objects, we can see that there are kind of two primary sections that a designer can interact with. The first is the select root note. They can use this drop down menu to select the root note of the chord that they are wanting to create. The second section are the list of Boolean values here. These allow the designer to determine what intervals, or rather what notes, they want the chord to contain. If we actually take a look at the chord base script itself, we can see kind of the inner workings of this particular script. There are multiple things happening here, but essentially the script is handling three primary things. First is it creates a list of intervals that were chosen by the designer. And this is handled inside of the populate interval list function. It does this by iterating through the various Boolean values and it adds the interval values that the designer chose. The function is also responsible for converting the intervals into their correct note value based on the root note that the designer selected. So, for example, if the designer created a chord that is, has a root of C and they wanted to add the major second, well, the major second of C is D. However, if the designer built a chord off of the root F and they also wanted to add the major second, well, the major second of F is G. This interval add statement here is what's responsible for converting the interval to the correct note value. The function ensures that the correct note is added to the list. Now, the second item that this script handles is setting the value of a state group inside of Wise, and that's done inside of the set interval state function. So each time this state, or excuse me, each time this function is called, a random index is chosen from the interval list, which we can see here. Once that value has been chosen, it sets the state group value inside of Y's to match that value. So in this case, we can see this is the statement that is setting the state, and we know that our state group is called notes. If I come back over to my WISE project in our Game Syncs tab, we can see that there is a notes state group. And inside of the state group are various states, each corresponding to the different notes that could be triggered at any given time. This state group is linked to the instruments that are playing the actual notes, and we'll see how that works more in just a moment. 
But the third and final responsibility of the chord base script is to set the value of another state group inside of Wise. This is handled inside of the set drone function here. The state group, which is called root notes, is in charge of setting the corresponding root notes state group value so that the droning synth instrument plays the correct note. And the correct note is determined based on the root note that was selected by the designer. So again, if I come back over to Wise, we can see in our states that we have a root notes state group. And similar to the notes state group, the root note state group has states for all the available notes that could be played. So now we can come back over into Unity. Now let's actually take a look at where and how the sounds themselves are being triggered. So as we saw, every single time a ball collides with a brick, a sound is generated. And for this, we need to take a look at the ball game objects. So I'm gonna select this ball game object here. Each ball game object contains two scripts. It contains the ball bouncer script and the ball script. Most notably though, inside of our ball game object would be our scriptable objects of type ball base. So if I open up the ball orange scriptable object here, we can see that it contains a few different variables that can be manipulated. We see that it has ball speed and ball attack modifiers. These handle their respective attributes. But the two that we're most interested in when it comes to generating sound is the instrument list here and the play unison boolean. The instrument list here serves as a list that determines what sound or instrument is heard upon colliding with a brick. In the case of an orange ball, the bell instrument is what we hear. Now the bells scriptable object here is derived from the instrument type class. And if you remember, the instrument type class is the same class that's used for the drone. If we open the bells scriptable object, we can see that it is storing a wise event name that's called play bells. If I navigate over to our wise session again, and I go into my events, we can see that we do have a play bells event. The play bells event is responsible for playing the bells switch container. So let's take a look at how wise is handling the bell instrument. So if I come over to the bells instrument container right here, we see that it's this, a switch container, and inside of the switch container, it houses multiple random containers, each one corresponding to a different note that could be played. Now, each random container holds the various individual sound SFX files for that particular note. For instance, the C random container here holds the three different versions of the C note. Each one is a C note, but it plays a different octave. And you can hear that when I press play on this particular random container. And as you can hear, it randomly chooses which C note to hear. Now, if we go back to the switch container for the bells, we can see that the switch group has been assigned to the state group notes, the same state group that we were taking a look at earlier and how it is being manipulated in the code. Now, the various random containers have now been assigned to the corresponding state inside of the notes state group. For instance, the random container A has been assigned to state A. The random container B has been assigned to state B, so on and so forth. So now, if we return back to the play bells event, by setting our notes state group, when I play the play bells event, it will play that corresponding note. So this will play C. If I change that to E, it will now play E. Same with G. And back to C. Now everything that we have seen for the play bells is the same for the play dream pluck. If it is set to C, we hear the corresponding note.
And in addition to the Play Dream Pluck event, the Play Cloud Shimmer Drone event works similarly. We have our root notes state group here, and it is set to a value of C. So when I play the event, we hear C. If we set it to another value, say E, it crossfades us to E. If we change it to say G, it crossfades us to G, and we'll go back to C. And then we have one final state group here, which is end song. And when end song is set to a value of end, as you can hear, it fades out the drone. So now we can come back over to Unity. For the time being, I'm going to disable the green balls and we're just gonna focus on the orange. So for now, let's go ahead and go back into the orange ball scriptable object. Every time the ball collides with a brick, the bell sound will play. So the bell instrument is held inside of the instrument list, which means that other instruments can be played alongside the bell sound. What I'll do is I'll add in the dream pluck instrument sound to the instrument list. Now when a ball collides with a brick, it will play both the bell and the dream pluck sound. And here's what that sounds like. So as you can probably hear, the two sounds are playing two different notes, which creates kind of a sort of harmony effect. But some designers may want both instruments to play the same note, which is where the play unison boolean comes into effect. By selecting the play unison option, now both the bell and the dream pluck will play the same note upon collision. And so that's the basic structure for this prototype. At this point, the system would be able to grow by a sound designer adding new instruments or a new droning synth. And each of these instruments and synths could be selected by a designer inside of Unity, and they could then create brand new chord patterns to make new adaptively generated music. And so what I'll do is I'll close out the video by playing another song arrangement that's in a completely different key. I really hope you've enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.